Hi, I'm Mark Edwards. Welcome to Travelog and welcome to Tong Run in northeastern Guizhou. I've come to their city centre to admire three of China's most famous cultural symbols. They are Confucianism, Buddhism and Taoism. Now, I'm not going to give the game away, but one of those guys is going to feature a little more in the rest of the episode. Anyway, I've also been told that Tongren people are really into their fishing and they love to eat. But on top of loving to eat, they love chilly, spicy food. So I'm going to hopefully enjoy some of that. But above all, they are very proud of their clean, clear water and the amazing scenery that surrounds them. Let's see if they're right. Getting to Tongren can be a little tricky, but don't let that deter you. Tongren is Guizhou's hidden gem, and the effort to get there will be amply rewarded. There are 350,000 people living in Tongren County, and around 70% of them are from ethnic minorities. So this is the place for you if you want to get a taste of ethnic culture. Tongren literally means bronze man. And the origins of the name can be traced to the legend of a man who found three bronze statues of Confucius, the Buddha and Lao Tzu under that pavilion. This pavilion built in 1516 is called the Kwa Ao Ting or the Pass the Examination Pavilion. By tradition, seven days before the imperial examination was held, Local officials would hold a ceremony here to wish all the students from Tongren success. Just a little pointer, it's called a pavilion if it doesn't have a wall, and with walls it's a pagoda. Something the pavilion shows is that Tongren definitely looks after its own. Further into the town, is the former home of a Tongren native and martyr called Joey Chun. The story goes that he died during the war, protecting his colleagues. Offered the chance to escape, he realized that two female colleagues had been left behind. In the end, he sacrificed himself to ensure that they escaped safely. What a hero! So Tongren's not an especially big city, but well, I think that's a bonus because you get to stroll around at your own pace and find places like this. This house was built in the early 20th century and if anything it feels very different to the ones that I've seen in Beijing, the uh, Suhoyuan or courtyard houses. These ones are all split up so I was just checking out the bedroom and living room. We've got the meeting all here and then just in front of me apparently there's the kitchen and reading room. So very very different. More precisely it was built in 1918 and the house remains a fine example of traditional Chinese architecture. It also displays a minimalist elegance inside with its hard yet comfortable chairs. And there's also a large photograph of the young man who gave his life at the tender age of 35. This is the uh, Tongren local style, and uh, I'm liking it. It's so simple in a way. You just pick your noodles, they boil them up, then you pick essentially what you want on top. So we've got mushroom, pork, um, slightly fatty pork, and then some beef. And then they add all these uh, other little condiments on top, put some soup right onto it, and you've got yourself a wholesome meal for around about five quid. That's absolutely nothing. What a bargain. So simple and great. So if you're into your spice, then you'll be into Guizhou cuisine. Known as one of China's eight famous cuisines, Guizhou food is characterized by its combination of sour and spicy flavors. 
bordering both Hunan and Sichuan, places that are renowned for their hot food. Guizhou's spicy dishes come as no surprise. The sourness comes from the pickled vegetables that are ubiquitous in Guizhou homes. The combination may be new to Western taste buds, as it won't be something you're used to. But boy, has it got to be tried. Some of the local food is served only during the major Chinese festivals. That's Chinese New Year around February time and the Qingming Festival around the beginning of April. If you get the chance, make sure to grab a load of the glutinous rice with dried pork. It's also one of the non-spicy dishes if you're put off by too much pepper. Do it. Oh. Oh, okay. Okay, now you might, if you've been to China or watched any shows on China, you'll notice that you'll see a lot of these chicken feet around. And before you start screaming and saying, oh, he's going to eat chicken feet and it's still got the nails on it, which it still does, but one man's chicken feet is another man's caviar. So if you can just put the palate across, blank palate, I'm going to try and describe what it feels like to eat a chicken feet. Hmm. So basically, hmm. Oh, good stuff. Um, it's very bony, but what's the best way to describe it? It's a bit like when you, t you peel off the, when you're having a roast chicken, you peel off the, 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 the fat on the top and it's nice and crisp. That's the kind of thing I always like eating that. Yeah, it's probably not the healthiest thing, but if you can get past the nails, ooh, it's, uh, it's actually pretty good. Fishing is probably the most popular participation sport in the world. Apparently more people go angling or fishing than play organised football. But one thing that's very obvious in Tongren is the enthusiasm with which the local people have embraced fishing. They are absolutely crazy about it. So much so that the local government is doing its best to have the city named the fishing capital of China. Tongren people love to fish at any and all times. So head out to the river on a balmy midweek or weekend night and you'll find scores of people on the bridges and riverbanks, rods in hand. You need to be aware that Tongren is quite a unique place. It might not be all about five-star living and the sort of dime a dozen cultural sites that you can find in most tourist cities in the world. As off the beaten track locations go, this one is right up there. And what gives Tongren its real charm is its everyday life. You can enjoy a glimpse into the rural village life 
and in particular, the ubiquitous role played by water. The water that makes its way down from Fanjing Mountain is said to be amongst the purest in China, and the Tomrunners, if we can call them that, make every possible use of it. Now it's time to see the famed ethnic minorities. There are 26 documented ethnic minorities living in Tongren County, making up a total of around 250,000 people. We're heading up to a typical Tuja village to finally get up close and personal with an ethnic lifestyle. The Tuja form the sixth largest ethnic minority of China, with a total population of over 8 million. They have their own language, which has distinct similarities with Tibetan and Burmese. Whew. So I hiked up to a Tuja village in Tongren, and it is a little humid today, but if anything, it makes me appreciate the mineral water that we have flowing from the mountains. Very, very refreshing. But uh, I don't know what that is, so I'm going to go and find out. Hey, chef, you got you got me. In this village, you need to ditch your laptops and get back to basics. You never have imagined that in the 21st century you'd find such an old-fashioned way of manufacturing paper. It also serves to illustrate the self-sufficient lifestyle of some of China's ethnic minorities. Vegetables growing all around you, fresh mineral water, and your own paper-making plant. There's definitely still such a thing as living off the land. Thank you. I'm <laughs> Well, uh, that's how they make bamboo paper up in, uh, up in this part of Tongren. And old school, but very impressive. So there are 26 different types of ethnic minorities here in Tongren and we've got